Um, I'm, my name is Sarah McEwen. At the moment I work at the University of Dundee. I've been there for a year now um, with the community education team, which I'm really enjoying. And I'd like to say that in our undergraduate programme we've got a range of ages of learners who are, are doing their community education um, degree at the moment. Prior to working at the university, I worked for 19 years in local communities in Dundee and doing a variety of different roles within that time. I worked for Dundee City Council, um, but my, my job <coughs> changed through those years. I didn't intend to be there for 19 years, but that's what happens. Um, I don't even believe I'm that old, but I, I must be. Um, I started off as a sessional youth worker and um, progressed through into youth literacy work, which then led me into adult learning. It wasn't somewhere I intended to go because youth work was always my passion, but that is where um, my career journey went. <coughs> and I'm glad of that. I was having a wee look, so, uh, you know, when I was asked to come along and talk about the future of literacy in Scotland, I thought to myself I'm a wee bit out of touch because I've been involved in teaching for the past year. Um, it's, it's been at least six years since I was involved in pure literacy <coughs> work. But um, it's given me the opportunity to, to revisit what I did and have a wee look and see what was it we did then. And it's actually kindled that passion again in myself and I've made links with other people working in the field. And um, when I had a wee, a wee look at a bit of research I did in 2003, because um, I know the picture of the landscape was very different when I was involved in literacy's work. I started out doing it in 2003, as I said. Um, and in the introduction of this research, I've noted that the Scottish Executive has allocated funding of £51 million for the period 2001 to 2006 in a national drive to improve literacy and numeracy um, in Scotland. And I thought, that seems, <laughs> that seems unbelievable. Um, and I didn't realise I was quite ill qualified. I didn't realise how lucky I was to be working in that in that landscape, you know, <coughs> with those resources. Um, and it wasn't just about the, the money that was available then. <coughs> there was a lot of money, but there was also a political will. Literacy was high on the agenda. You know, it was, it was high on the agenda nationally and locally within local authorities. Um, and I think Jim made reference to it. <coughs> There was a real passion and a, you felt like you were on the leading edge, you know, there was money there to really uh, take creative approaches to the work we were doing. The funding was there, the ideas were there, the passion was there. I think a lot of that's still there, apart from maybe the money. Uh, <laughs> so this, I've probably spoken about some of this, but just to say what my passions are, who I am. Um, I'm very passionate about animals, I'm a vegan. And, yeah. Um, thank you. <laughs> and, uh, that's the dog Maxi there. Um, I love beaches and I feel passionate about social justice, especially in terms of inequalities um, and inequalities relating to which many relate to literacies. Um, I see inequalities on a daily basis where I live in Dundee, it's been more for the past 20 years, um, but also in our wider society, you know, in Scotland. And the, the funny mass is the fun, uh, nod towards creativity and arts, which I'm also very passionate about. And I think the work we do, we have to bring that in because you know we haven't we haven't found the solutions yet. So we need to keep coming up with creative ways of doing things um, and working with people and involving people. So yeah, I said a bit about that, the, the work I was doing. I was really lucky at the time because Certain people came together, there was myself as a youth worker with a little bit of knowledge and some money in my back pocket and um, we were able to, to work and pay for resources and other workers. So I worked in a, a small team of people, a poet, community arts worker and a DJ and the four of us created a little team and said how are we going how we, how we to do this work, we're not sure but let's Let's talk to as many uh, young people and young adults as we can, and let's try as many different things and uh, approaches as we can. And I must say we put quite a lot of blood, sweat and tears into that work. It's 
that's been one, was one of the most rewarding um, videos in my career. Um, I'm not, I could talk about that all day, but I know I've only got 15 minutes. So I won't talk about it for too long, but what I did bring along, and I've passed them around, is just an example of some of the, the work we did. Um, this was a little book of poems that was produced by a group we were working with of young people in Dundee who were fighting against child exploitation. And we worked with them for about six months. Initially, it was difficult to get much response from them, so taking a traditional communication route of just talking and asking questions um, didn't, didn't really yield very much. We did a bit of music, we did a bit of art, and we brought in poetry. Um, it, it really took off, and you can see by some of the materials in the books how much the young people express themselves through that medium. That in reading one poem, you could find out more about a young person's life, their, you know, their needs, their joy, their pain, than maybe months of, of talking and questioning might have <laughs> revealed. And they all pass these right on their side. Go, never really pass that out. I guess what I'm trying to say is that um, there's more ways to express ourselves than the kind of traditional dominant ways that we see literacies within our society. Um, and for me, literacies has always been about voice and not not just about not just about being able to speak and be heard, but also that knowledge that what you've got to say is valuable. Um, even if it doesn't fit in with the norm and the dominant kind of way that we communicate and express ourselves, you still have something very valuable to contribute. So, enough about me. What uh, says in Scotland today? Um, what does it look like? What does it look like? Is it is the future for literacies bleak or bright? I know that's a bit of a but let's go with that for starters. Um, who thinks it's bleak? Who's overall feeling is it's bleak? Okay, small show. You're in the minority, that's all right. You're allowed to be, that's great. <laughs> uh, what about bright? We can make it bright. <laughs> Sitting on the fence and that's too binary. <laughs> Right, so while I had to be dug it out, because as I said, I didn't feel like my finger was quite on the pulse with it. I thought, what is actually happening? Um, I know in Dundee um, that there's still a dedicated team of literacy workers within our adult learning, or within the community's department of the city council. So I knew that was happening in Dundee, but also knew that that wasn't across the board, and that was probably quite unique um, for that protected team to still be there, doing, very much doing um, literacy work, and only literacy work. Um, so I had to be, I had to be sort of um, ask around to see what other people were doing, and um, found that there are still there are still literacy workers out there, and some of you have put up your hands and identified yourself today. Um, not everybody's working in that traditional you're a dedicated literacy worker, so often it's been merged into a more generic role. You're doing other work, but it's still there. That was good to see. Um, I only really am speaking about Tayside and Fife for that because that's that's what I know. That's my my area. Um, <coughs> I'd like to explore this further, but for now, that's um, that's the scope. But I did speak to um, there is a person in Education Scotland with a literacy remit, Laura McIntosh. So I had, I had a quick conversation with her, and she had um, informed me that the the CLD Adult Literacies Network has been re-established um, and by Education Scotland and that brought, 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 brought mainly managers from local authorities together to talk about what people were doing across Scotland. So that's been re-established but also she said there was quite a good healthy representation from across Scotland at that. So that gave me a little bit of hope in my heart that you know that's still there on the agenda for certainly within local authorities and within uh, managers. Um, as far as getting a map of what's happening across Scotland, I don't know if where we could get that. I had a few conversations with people, um, but the, the CLD Standards Council are as part of their 
re-registration process, which we're introducing, we'll be asking people what their, their job title is, but also what their role, their role is. So I'm thinking that might give us, in the future, a little bit of a picture of who's doing the work. Obviously, you'd have to be a member of the CLP standard, so far to get that, but that could, you know, it could help to build a bit of a picture. The main thing being for me is that that work, it's still going on. People are still out there. They're doing it. It's not, it doesn't appear in all the sort of uh, community plans. Literacy isn't always mentioned. In our own Dundee, the workers were saying we've not got any mention of literacies or learning, particularly within that plan, which is a little bit concerning, but for now they're still there. Um, so just a few other things to consider is like, where are we? You know, there was all that money, um, that millions of pounds poured into uh, literacies work in the early 2000s. But where are we now? Have we solved it? You know, is that is everyone in Scotland literate and we changed the face of um, literacies in Scotland? I don't think so. Um, the, the Scottish Survey of Adult Literacies in 2009 identified that 26.7% of um, adults in Scotland may face occasional challenges with our literacies. Uh, the functional literacy skills. We don't have an update on that, but I just have a look at um, a report, the Curriculum for Excellence Level report <coughs> that's produced by the Scottish Government. And they've now, it's now based on teachers' professional judgments about the stage that uh, young people are at in terms of their, um, their progress reaching at, at attainment stages. Um, and this is from the P7. P7 for professional judgment um, from the teachers. This report was produced last December, so it's for 2017 to 2018. As you can see from that, um, the teachers were saying across Scotland that 73% were ready in terms of writing and 79% in terms of their reading. So that still leaves us <coughs> at almost a third um, who are not being judged as being functionally literate or um, are falling behind. So I would ask you to think about, you know, what does that mean? What does that mean if you're in that that third or that twenty <coughs> percent that aren't reaching those stages? What if you're at the you're one of the twenty six percent who's facing occasional challenges with their literacy? What does that mean in terms of your everyday life? Um, I would say you're then at the risk of being shut out from parts of society or um, <coughs> being left behind altogether. Um, it doesn't, I think when it says occasional challenges, maybe it doesn't quite tell us how, what that actually means. Um, maybe it doesn't quite capture the seriousness of that if that's in your own life and you can't navigate a part of society or, or feel included within it. There's something else to back up. <laughs> And I like the, the maths. So that's which one's which? That's it's Dundee the Ewan. No Glasgow's if you want to make Dundee the big one. Um, <laughs> I thought Dundee because that's where I'm at and Glasgow's for the end of the day. And um, that's the Scottish Index multiple deprivation 2016 maps. I've just brought the ones related to um, education. So you can't really see it what it says in the text, but the the, the darker red spots, patches are the data zones with the, the highest, 20% highest deprivation in terms of education. And you can see what that means, uh, what those indicators are. So for example, um, working age people with no qualifications, um, proportion of young people not in full-time education, employment or training, and proportion entering. So I think that um, Dundee, there's 71 data zones that are in the 20% highest deprivation, and Glasgow is 318. So. Um, some things to think about when you're going to have your discussion. Um, what you know, we've had a wee look at what the what the statistics are telling us what the workers out in the field are telling us in terms of maybe it's literacy is work is still there. But what is happening, um, what's the kind of wider picture? You know, the world that we're living in is different. 
today than it was even a couple of years ago. So um, just a few things, I'm not going to mention them in huge detail, but things to think about. And one of the ones is uh, a major one, I think, is the online world, the kind of faceless society we're <laughs> kind of moving towards, um, where it's really difficult to actually speak to a person when you're trying to access services or just go about your kind of day-to-day -day living. Um, and more and more, the, the kind of pushes for everything to be online and to be digital. I'm not against online, <laughs> and I don't, I'm not with that, but, because um, I, I just think you can't, you know, you, you can't replace the, what you get from calling together and having that connection with people and speaking to people. And if you struggle, if you're struggling to navigate in the world, making things online and not having somebody you can just speak to pr is, produces a whole another set of challenges, a whole new set of challenges. So thinking about that landscape we're in, and I think there's a bit of an assumption that everyone's got a, a mobile phone or a smartphone or, a, or even internet access, and you know, everybody doesn't. Um, you know, I think the, the language and the narrative is that everybody <coughs> does sometimes, so. Also, another thing that came up when I was speaking to people was um, in Esau work and work with Syrian refugees and people coming for Esau support and then it becoming apparent that they're not literate in their own first language. So how, what, and the Esau, oftentimes the Esau tutors or workers aren't quite sure how to deal with that because they're, they can teach English but they're not sure how to be tackle the literacies uh, part of it. Um, another thing just to think about. The employability agenda, which is a big agenda we hear about, and um, how does that, you know, what, what relevance has that got to uh, literacies and, um, you know, what kind of jobs are they getting, maybe getting pointed for to push into, instead of maybe having the opportunity to, to express yourself or address some of these the skills. And the skills and demands, I'm thinking about, well, the demands from the world and the skills of um, the workforce or people who are, are, are working um, within local communities, have we adapted our skills to meet the demands that people are coming forward with, but also with the changing, the changing demands, but also with the ageing workforce and people who might have been around where there was a lot of um, training um, for people when there was money about. Are they going to leave and retire? Hopefully they'll volunteer and come back and still work within communities. But are we potentially going to lose some of those skills? <coughs> and how do, we, how do we transfer that? Make sure that knowledge gets transferred. Welfare reform, another huge um, policy. Um, and the impact of welfare reform within our local communities and the tasks that's putting on people, the nature, different nature of tasks that people have to navigate in order to get money and um, possibly signing up for things they don't understand. But they're sitting looking at you, Alan, could you have first hand experience of this? Well, yeah, the, the unemployment officer are making people sign up for Twitter, for instance. What? Sorry. <laughs> really? Uh, to look for jobs. To look for jobs yeah. I was thinking about the conditionality agreements as well. People sign and maybe don't realise what they're signing to absolutely, agree to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, which we see more and more. And I just, when I was looking at this research, this is from 2003, but I thought it was quite good. Um, one of the guys I spoke to, he was an 18 year old, um, 18 year old male, and I was just asking about where might they find, come up against those occasional difficulties, those challenging. Um, daily activities and he he said to me all the time he didn't like when I get a letter from the social that's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like when I get a letter from the social that really hurts me. I don't understand the lingo of the social. It's still so relevant. I don't understand that. It's deliberate lingo. Yeah. So but that's you know, that's having a major impact on people in their communities. Um, I was like, what about resources? I'm thinking books, though. I think that was a big money 
resource issue <laughs> that we need to think about. Is there going to be money? It's good to see that there, are, there is still work going on despite the cuts in the austerity and um, what's happening with the powers. I don't know. That was just a, a quick research there because um, this is, for me, I thought, I really want to know now. <laughs> I know a little bit, a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing. Now I want to know more. What is, you know, what is, what does the future of um, logistics in Scotland look like? So I'm making that a mission amongst other things over the next wee while to have to look into that in more, more detail and speak to people. So if MD is interested in being involved in that or speaking to me some more, that would be great. Come and see me at some point during the day. And then we can have a chat about that. <coughs> and the other thing is, that's just for me, that's what Lutrises is about. And keeping that in mind that it's about, it is about connection, it is about belonging, um, it's about navigating your way around the world you live in, and it's about your voice. Okay. That's that. Thanks. Well, <laughs>